Alright, hello guys, Fyker here, and today we are um, talking about an all time horror movie slasher classic known as Scream. It's uh, it's just a classic. All, ar all around. But why was it so successful? Well, today we're going to be pointing out a lot of the factors that made Scream a Wes Craven classic. The state of horror movies at the time. The horror genre basically originated in the 60s with the stuff like Psycho, and later on it developed 70s and 80s into some instant classics such as Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, but they kept making sequels and it really lost the plot and ruined it all so the horror genre started losing popularity and well more stuff was added at the time as, it, as this was in the late 90s by the time the horror started losing its uh, uh, charm and the way Scream was played was a very different perspective and it, it, it was basically just more popular and because of all of the things that it brought into the genre as a whole and that's why Scream became successful. But what were the, but that was one of the factors that made it highly praised among among viewers. But now we're gonna look at the film itself. It was self-aware and self-referential. Scream can be seen as a horror, but it can also be seen in multiple ways as a comedy. It's always pointing jokes out about other horror famous horror movies and basically not 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 lightening itself in the sense that it shows that it's somewhat different. But in the way that they knew that, that in the way that the directors knew that it was going to be a success, and they didn't dump on the horror movies, they just well added to it. And it was fun for Wes Craven to get one really famous actor to just basically take the mic out. Like, well, the intro is an all-time classic, as either it's shown so 90s, and then as I said before about how it being so self-referential and self-aware, it knows when it makes a mistake, and basically that was the excuse for the old sequels. The fact that Drew Barrymore is a very famous actor, and the way the trailers were set out, it was designed in the way that it would make you think, well, she's a survivor girl, because from the horror genre, there's always multiple characters. The black guy, long slut, stupid jock, nerd, and survivor girl who survives. You should never see that one coming. The fact that Casey Becker, Drew character that Drew Barrymore plays, doesn't make it past the opening sequence. Just, it just... It's such a shock that it makes it a classic, and the phone call itself is highly praised. And the way Ghostface's character as the killer was presented, along with what stuff that happened later, was ingenious. And at the time, it was amazing. One of the things that Scream would always have over other horror movies is the fact that it's that the, you don't know who the killer is. You don't go, oh yeah, this is Jason, this is Michael Myers, this is Freddy Krueger. No, you have no idea who the killer is. Especially under the mask as well, the fact that the killer is not only a normal killer, not unlike that of Jason or super anyone supernatural, but the fact that it's down to earth and the fact that it's just a human, a normal human behind the mask. It really, it, it was different and that's one of the reasons why it's highly praised and I'll talk about that even more later but that was one of the biggest, most noticeable differences. Another thing is the fact that the killer is not only unknown, but also has a social background of the characters and interacts with them normally as if they were not the killer. And it's amazing that they can sneak in, and it's a way, amazing the way that they're portrayed. It, it just gets you in the end, so it has more effect when they take off the mask. That was the whole point all along, but it turns the whole movie into a who done it scenario and it's it completely changes the horror genre in in that sense and trust me it goes deep this is the point when we get into spoiler territory and scream is such a classic i do not want to spoil this to you so i'm even regretting saying their names but so click off the video now i'm giving you 10 seconds i can't wait 10 seconds let's continue there is not one killer but two killers which is a shock because as more people die, you begin to suspect people. And one of the largest suspects was, was Billy, who was Sydney's boyfriend. And that's such a shocker, but yeah. But it's not just that. There are two killers. Billy is put in prison because they suspect him. And later you find out that Billy has nothing to do with it. So you immediately don't suspect Billy. 
and there's a one person in the cinema that's devoted and like, no, no, Billy's the killer. And at the end of it, that dumb bitch is right. I watched a movie with my best mate George and we could look at the characters and see and see our fictional versions of ourselves. Seriously, the characters there were not only some are special, but some that actually gives you a, an effect for the characters, and it's fun not only the who done it, but also the who do you think your characters like. It's like a quiz in a way. I, I like quizzes. I'm not sure why, but to put it simply, I was Stu, George was Randy, and the rest is history. The fact that the killer wasn't just uh yeah the black guy, blonde slut, nerd, dumb jock, survivor girl. Yeah, it, it's different, and it's another thing that was highly praised about the movie. The thing could speculate so many fan, fan theories. One of the most popular one was Dewey being a third killer. You see, Z Dewey survives all four movies. He's always attacked in every single one of them, but he somehow survives all the way through. But it attracts a little attention. And then the fact that there's some plot holes that wouldn't make sense in all of the movies about how the killer could get around everywhere, even with two killers. But three killers, and that might go a bit little over the top, I think they should stop at three. But do we being a killer would definitely be cool. And there's plenty of other fan theories like that, but that's the most popular one that I've found. That's it for today's video, I've been holding this off for a while, I'm not sure why. But I guess I got motivated the moment I got this new mic, so the sound cap just brilliant on it by the way. I tested it out first, but at first it doesn't sound that good. And my my last video on it, the master plan on Hitman. But this this actually sounds pretty good now because I fixed it up a bit. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Leave a like, subscribe, and uh, I've put a lot of time to this video. So I would I would be I would appreciate it. And uh see you guys later. Bye. Oof.